Dying Light 2 improves upon everything that made the first Dying Light game great. It's faster, more brutal, and involves more decision making than ever before. So here's 10 things you absolutely need to know before playing. Also to celebrate the release of Dying Light 2, I'm doing another giveaway for a deluxe edition on a platform of your choice. You only need to be subscribed to the channel and follow the links down below and I will reach out to the winner at the end of the giveaway. Coming up to number 1, let's talk about the main story. It takes place roughly 15 years after the events of the first game and you get to play with a brand new character named Aiden Coldwell. The game setting is much larger now with a city 4 times the size of the one in the first Dying Light game but also with lots more content in it. Techland was able to confirm that the game takes around 500 hours to fully complete but realistically speaking the main story and all of the side missions only take about 80 hours with the main story campaign alone being around 20 hours long. Suffice to say that the world of Dying Dying Light 2 has changed a lot, with advanced technology being way more scarce than ever before, and most of the human civilization having moved completely to the rooftops in order to avoid the zombie apocalypse, which would also make traversal way more interesting in this version of the game. This brings us to all of the crazy improvements that Dying Light has made since the first game, starting of course with the parkour and it takes it to a whole new level with thousands of new animations and improvements compared to the first game. So unlike Crane, Aiden is much faster and will feel more agile, especially since he get access to a lot of new skills that will make parkour flow even better. You will get access to wall running, mid-air dashes, you can use rails and zip lines, and there's a ton of other things in there that we will check in just a little bit, including new gadgets. One of them comes up to number three, and that is the paraglider. You get it during the main story, and it also lets you take advantage of all of the verticality that Dying Light 2 has to offer. And it will definitely come in handy since it's going to let you just glide from one rooftop to the next or make your way inside of a nearby building. Also added air vents will let you catch more air and keep your gliding for much longer which should make traverse a lot more interesting than ever before. This also brings us to the grappling hook, yes it is making a return in Dying Light 2 but it's also getting a complete rework, specifically in the first game it was pretty OP as it kind of functioned more as a web zip rather than an actual hook which made like endgame encounters a bit too easy once you get your hands on it. In Dying Light 2 on the other hand it's going to be more physics based and instead will work closer to the one for example in Ghost of Tsushima where you actually get to grapple and swing over obstacles using actual physics. Techland was able to confirm though that the grappling hook is fully upgradable so the one that you have at the start of the game won't be the same as the one that it will have in the end game, likely pointing out towards the fact that there's a more powerful version and some upgrades later down the line, also likely dependent on the faction choices. Which also brings us to number 4, factions and choices. Dying Light 2 introduces 3 new factions you can join during the main campaign. On one side we have the survivors, this faction is made out of regular civilians who wear normal clothing and also use their environment to stay alive. This is the most peaceful peaceful and friendly of the factions but also has the least power and weaponry as a result. Then we have the Peacekeepers, a militaristic faction that prides themselves on being able to hold law and order above everything else and they are distinct from everybody else thanks to their military grade equipment and weapons. And finally we have the Renegades, a violent faction made out of ex-prisoners led by Colonel Williams. It also functions a bit more like a group of bandits which is also reflected in their attire and makeshift weaponry. Depending on your decisions during these missions, you also get to decide which one of these factions you get to help more and provide with more valuable information and resources, which in turn will increase your allegiance towards them. These decisions, on the other hand, will have various consequences, both positive and negative, as you help these factions to extend their reach over the city. So for example, if you decide to give certain outposts to certain factions, you will get different bonuses or upgrades, such as for example, having zip lines or traps installed in various areas of the city. But it can also extend to which areas you get access to, like for example you can open up completely new zones or completely seal them off and never get access to them again. And finally it can lead to other more severe consequences including having certain characters die which might have other repercussions later down the line. Now of course this is a zombie apocalypse so you also get to encounter zombies not just human animals 
enemies which also brings us to number five introducing new zombies most if not all of the specimens from the first dying light game make a return some of them even improved but there's also completely new ones including the hauler which emits a horrific howl when it spots the player alerting pretty much all of the surrounding infected then we also have the banshee a more crazy looking infected that will use its long claws to attack the player the third one is the revenant it's an infected type that emits a mist that will buff all the surrounding zombies making them way more dangerous in the process and finally there's a fourth type that we know of called the drowner seems to be an underwater based infected that features spikes on the side of its arms it's likely going to use those in combat and it will likely be featured during these water sequences when you get to play dying light 2. Now obviously to take down these new enemies, both human and infected, you will need some cool skills and new combat abilities which obviously have made their way back in Dying Light 2. So in Dying Light 2 we're gonna get a complete new skill tree that this time around will only be condensed into sections, mainly combat and parkour from what we know so far. So starting with the combat, there's a number of really cool skills that we were able to get from a recent reveal. The block charge is one of them, so when blocking you can charge at an enemy in front of you and pretty much knock them at the ground. It seems to be extremely useful at using enemies to break your fall and completely avoid any damage when jumping off buildings. But Dying Light 2 also introduces a parry mechanic and there's a perfect parry ability in here that lets you completely stagger an enemy if you parry at the right moment. At the same time there's also a perfect dodge version of this so if you time it right you can slow down time which gives you the opportunity to jump back in with a devastating counter attack. Finally, in the combat skill tree, we also got a glimpse at the ground pound, a more advanced attack that lets you perform a powerful AoE damage attack while in the mid air, but obviously there's plenty other ones that you will definitely want to unlock eventually. This also brings us to the parkour. We've seen a number of really interesting abilities here that make parkour way more interesting. Of course, far jump is one of them. It lets you use obstacles to spring your character and then jump way further compared to the first dying light. The game also adds wall running. You can now run alongside horizontal surfaces thanks to this skill right here, which should make moment-to-moment -moment parkour way cooler than ever before. And finally, we got a glimpse at the bash skill. It lets you run through obstacles and enemies without stopping while also throwing them pretty much out of your way. Now, of course, you don't just get to use parkour and your fist to take down enemies enemies you also get to use weapons and guns do make a return from the first time light game but they will be more scarce than ever before since obviously a very long time has passed since the zombie apocalypse started still there's over 200 different weapons in the game that you can go ahead and collect and combine weapons will get assembled from scraps since the premium forge ones have pretty much gone to waste thanks to well just the apocalypse going on and nobody being able to maintain them you can still though find some very cool weapons by doing certain objectives and completing certain missions including even intact ones but obviously those will be more rare all in all weapon degrading will also make a comeback and you have to be mindful of the repair cost so you don't end up with a broken weapon in the middle of the fight moving on to number eight let's talk about open world and side activities most of the buildings in dying light 2 can be explored for additional resources but they will likely also feature lots of infected and other challenges. On top of that, the game also introduces bandit camps that you can raid and pretty much conquer. Obviously, you have to take down the enemies and the leader inside of it before raising the totem and claiming those camps for yourself. But of course, these will also open them up as safe points and give you a bunch of other rewards. Infected nests or volatile nests are also making a return from the first dying light or at the very least a form of it is making a return from the first game, especially since it seems to function similarly when it's much easier to explore it during the night time compared to during the day. Especially so, there's gonna be way less activity inside of the nest since obviously the volatiles will be out in the open pretty much hunting, which will also give you access to other cool rewards and likely other challenges that 
that will give you tons of XP, resources, and unique items. Now, obviously, stealth will come in handy during these moments, which brings us to number 9. Another big improvement in Dying Light 2 is the stealth mechanic. You likely want to make use of the stealth mechanic in the dark zones, especially against the infected, that will have a harder time to detect you if you're going in more silently, but it can also be used against enemies and there's improvements to AI to facilitate that, but just keep in mind that human enemies will likely have other tools to detect you and will be more wary of their surroundings. Finally, this brings us to number 10, and this isn't the only content that you will get in Dying Light 2. Just like in the case of the first game, there's going to be a lot of post-launch support for years to come. According to Techland, the first Dying Light was supported with additional content, free and paid, for 4 years after its release, and they've confirmed that they're planning pretty much the same with Dying Light 2 as well. The game already has 2 story DLCs confirmed if you buy the Deluxe Edition, and and at least one huge expansion, but there will be lots of additional drops, free content, weapons, missions, and gameplay mechanics later down the line. All in all, it looks really promising, seems that there's going to be a lot going on for Dying Light 2, so again, if you want to see more Dying Light 2 content, definitely let me know down below by leaving a like on the video, subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.